Okay, so what happens now if we have a function with multiple outputs? Uh, the partial derivative still makes sense. Can we do that? Sure, you just do things one output at a time. Let's show how that works in the context of a simple example. Let's look at a function that has multiple inputs, multiple outputs, and compute all the partial derivatives. Let's say f has two inputs, x and y, and three outputs, u, v, and w. And what we're going to do is write u, v, and w as functions of x and y. So u is minus x to the fourth, v is y squared minus xy, w is 5x minus 2y. Now, to compute the partials, we just take the first output, let's say u, and look at the partials of that with respect to the two inputs, x and y. What's the partial of u with respect to x? Well, u is minus x to the fourth, so the derivative of u with respect to x is, is simply minus 4x cubed. That's easy. u doesn't even have any y's in it, so that partial derivative is really simple. Oh, but we also need to compute the partial of u with respect to y, the second input. And you say, well, there's no y's there. Aha, well then, that partial derivative is zero. That's the first output. Now we need to do the second output, v. What is the partial derivative of that with respect to the first input, x? Well, there's only one x in there, and it's multiplied by minus y. So that partial derivative is simply minus y. What's the partial of v with respect to y? Well, partial v, partial y, this is going to have two terms in it. The first, I take the derivative of y squared, that's 2y. The second, I take the derivative of minus x times y, that's minus x. Lastly, I look at w. What's the partial of w with respect to x? That's just 5. What's the partial of w with respect to y? That's just minus 2. Easy enough. Now notice, two inputs, three outputs. There's a total of six partial derivatives, that is 2 times 3, one for every input-output pair. Okay, that wasn't so bad. That was pretty doable. Oh, but what happens if you have a lot of inputs and outputs? Let's say that you run a bakery, and you have to buy a whole bunch of ingredients, uh, chocolate, butter, eggs, flour, fruit, milk, salt, sugar, yeast, whatever, and you produce a bunch of different goods that you're going to sell. Bagels and breads and croissants and cupcakes and donuts. Mmm, I'm getting kind of hungry here. Okay, what happens when the prices of the ingredients change? You have to update the prices of the products that you sell. How do those product prices change as a function of commodity prices? How do outputs change as a function of inputs? Well, there's a function, a cost function, that has n inputs and m outputs. And that tells you the prices of the products that you sell as a function of the prices of the inputs that you buy, of the commodities that you buy. Wow, there's a whole lot of partial derivatives going on here. If the price of eggs goes up, and the price of milk goes up, and the price of butter goes up, but the price of sugar goes down, and the price of chocolate goes down, how is that going to impact the price that you charge for croissants? Ooh, wow, that's so many rates of change. What are we going to do? How are we going to keep track of all those partial derivatives? I wonder, maybe there's some structure out there to organize data, something algebraic, something geometric, something computational. I wonder what it could be.